Previously, we defined the cross ratio not only for four points lying on a line, but also for four points lying on the circle. And then we defined the harmonic division for four points lying on a line as the cross ratio equals one. But we never defined the harmonic division for four points that lie on a circle. Remember that the cross ratio of four points lying on a circle is A divided by B times C divided by D, where A, B, C, and D are the red segments that you see labeled on the picture. For which quadrilaterals A divided by B times C divided by D equals 1? Such quadrilaterals are called harmonic quadrilaterals. Let's take a random point on the plane and connect it with lines to the four points of the quadrilateral. Then take the second intersection points and they form another quadrilateral here. Because of the properties of the cross ratio, we know that the cross ratio of the four points here in this quadrilateral equals the cross ratio of the four points here. And therefore, if this is a harmonic quadrilateral, then this here is also a harmonic quadrilateral. Also, if we take a random point from the circle and connect it with lines with the four vertices of the quadrilateral like this, then the four lines that appear in blue make a harmonic pencil of lines, which means that if we intersect these four blue lines with another line, say here, then the four intersection points are in harmonic division. And if we intersect it here, for example, with another line, then these four points are also in harmonic division, because we know that this sign divided by this sign times this sign divided by this sign equals 1. Now let this point be the midpoint of this diagonal in the quadrilateral. And let's call this angle alpha and this angle beta. Let's call this angle here x and this angle here y. And also let this angle here in the quadrilateral be gamma, such that this triangle now has angles alpha, beta, and gamma. Now let's apply the law of sines to this triangle and this triangle. We get that sine of gamma minus x over sine of x equals this length divided by this length, which is just 1, so we can ignore it, times the sine of beta divided by the sine of alpha. Now let's apply the law of sines to this triangle. We get that a equals 2 times r times the sine of this angle, which is gamma minus y, where r is the radius of this circle. And let's apply this theorem for this triangle. We get that b equals 2 times r sine of y. And therefore, a divided by b equals 2 times r sine of gamma minus y over 2 times r sine of y. The 2r cancels out and we get sine of gamma minus y over sine of y. But now we know that a over b equals d over c because of this equality here. We know that the red quadrilateral is harmonic. But by the law of sines applied to this triangle, we know that d divided by c equals sine of beta over sine of alpha. And so this equals this meaning that sine of gamma minus y over sine of y equals sine of beta over sine of alpha, but it equals sine of gamma minus x over sine of x. So we get this. And therefore, cotangent of y equals cotangent of x. And since x and y are between 0 and 180 degrees, we get that x equals y. So what did we get? We got that this line and this line are isogonal conjugates with respect to this angle in the triangle. But this is the median and the isogonal conjugate of the median is the sim median, and therefore this line is the sim median of this triangle with respect to this vertex of the triangle. Similarly, we can prove that this line is the sim median in this triangle, and we can prove that this line is the sim median in this triangle, and this line is the sim median in this triangle. This line being a sim median in this triangle means that if we take the tangent lines to the circle at this vertex and this vertex, and we intersect them here at this point, then this point, this point, and this point lie on a straight line. And now similarly, since this line is the sim median in this triangle, we get that if this and this are the tangent lines to the circle at this point and this point, and they intersect here, we get that this vertex, this vertex, and this point always lie on a straight line, given that this is a harmonic quadrilateral. Hence, for any triangle, if we drop the sim median and we intersect it with the circumcircle of the triangle, the resulting quadrilateral is always harmonic, and the other way around. If we have a harmonic quadrilateral, then this diagonal is definitely the sim median of the corresponding triangle. Here's one more property of the harmonic quadrilateral. Suppose you take the angle bisector of one of the angles in the harmonic quadrilateral and you intersect it with this diagonal at this point. And suppose this distance is m and this distance is n. Then, by the angle bisector theorem, we know that d divided by c equals m divided by n, as written here. 
but we also know that d divided by c equals a divided by b because of this equality here. And therefore, m divided by n equals a divided by b. So m divided by n equals a divided by b. So if we drop the angle bisector of this angle, the opposing angle in the harmonic quadrilateral, it's going to intersect this diagonal at a point such that a divided by b equals this distance divided by this distance. But we know that m divided by n equals a divided by b. And so the two feet of the angle bisectors from here and from here must coincide and intersect the diagonal at one point. The same property applies for the angle bisector of this angle and the angle bisector of this angle. If we take the angle bisector here and intersect it with this diagonal at some point, then we can act like this, then this here would also be an angle bisector of this angle. Conversely, if we don't know that this is a harmonic quadrilateral, but we know it's cyclic, and we know that the angle bisector of this angle intersects the diagonal at the same point at which this angle bisector of this angle intersects the diagonal, then we can conclude that d divided by c equals m divided by n equals a divided by b, and so we can deduce this equality from which it follows that the quadrilateral is harmonic. Here's the optional problem. Take a circle and a point outside of the circle, drop the two tangent lines from this point to this circle here and here, and let these be the points of tangency, and now draw a line that passes through this point and intersects this circle at this point. Now connect these two points and drop a perpendicular from this point to this line, like that, and then let this point be the midpoint of this segment, so this equals this, and now connect this point and this point with a line intersected with the circle at this point. And now we need to prove that this line is perpendicular to this line. And here's the solution. First of all, let's take this line and continue it until it intersects the circle for the second time at this point, and then connect these two points like that. We need to prove that this angle here is 90, because if we prove that it's 90, and then from this cyclic quadrilateral, it would also follow that this angle here is 90 degrees. In other words, we need to prove that this line is parallel to this line. Now consider the quadrilateral defined by the four points marked in green. It is a harmonic quadrilateral, because it is cyclic, and because if we take the tangent lines at this point and this point, they intersect here, this point lies on this diagonal of the quadrilateral. And now that we know that this is a harmonic quadrilateral, we can take this point and project this quadrilateral onto this line with respect to this point. Now this point would go here, this point would go here, and this point would stay at its place. This point would go to the intersection of this line and this line. Let's assume that they intersect at some finite point here. Then, because this quadrilateral was harmonic, and because cross ratio is preserved under this projection, we get that this point, this point, this point, and this point are in harmonic division. And therefore, this length divided by this length times this length divided by this length equals 1. But this length equals this length. Therefore, this divided by this equals 1. But that means that this distance equals this distance, which is impossible since this distance is always larger than this distance. This is a contradiction with our assumption that this line and this line intersect at a finite point. And therefore, the only possibility is that the two lines are parallel, meaning that this angle is 90 because this angle here is 90. And finally, from this cyclic quadrilateral, it follows that since this angle is 90, then this angle equals this angle equals 90 degrees, as desired.